Mindanao in the southern Philippines has a brutal and tortured history in this predominantly Catholic country. For centuries, minority Muslims have fought against Spanish and then American colonial rule. These are fighters with the Moro Islamic Liberation Front. Today, they're still fighting for political autonomy from Manila. But unable to find a peaceful settlement with successive Philippine governments, they're once again on a dangerous course to war. I'm Veronica Pedroza, and on this edition of 101 East, we asked, can a solution to this long-running conflict ever be found? The modern conflict in Mindanao began 40 years ago when Muslims or Moros demanded independence from the Philippines. Their demands for self-rule still haven't been met. In the fighting since, more than 100,000 people have been killed, millions more displaced. And now the situation is escalating again. Aid groups are warning of a humanitarian catastrophe. Orlando de Guzman reports on the civilians caught in the middle of the war. It wasn't long after the peace talks broke down that villagers in central Mindanao began to flee. The exodus began as a trickle, but with the first hint of more fighting, hundreds of thousands packed up and moved to safer ground. Entire villages are emptied of their people and livestock, families taking everything they own while they can. These villagers in North Cotabato province are leaving just in time. There's word of a battle looming, and the Philippine military is moving in. In an instant, their homes are turned into a conflict zone. In the more remote villages, it's a long walk to a safer place. But even these people can't move fast enough to seek refuge. The conflict follows even those who try to flee it. Moments later, this man is hit by a stray bullet. His injury is not life-threatening, and he makes it to the nearest hospital. Not so for others. Conflict isn't new to Mindanao. Minority Muslims have been demanding political autonomy for decades. Last month, a peace deal, 11 years in the making, seemed within reach between the Moro Islamic Liberation Front and the Philippine government. But pressure from powerful Christian leaders squashed the deal, and fighting has resumed, with civilians once again caught in the middle. They've been moving out of areas where fighting goes on for the last 30, 40 years. So the crisis presently is nothing new in a way. People are used to that. What is new is the scale of the operations, the scale of the crisis. And in that, there is a serious, very serious increase. Government services are already stretched to the limit here. The displaced occupy school buildings and grain warehouses, sleeping next to what little they've saved. These people were forced to leave their homes a month ago, but they're still too afraid to go back. It's really hard. Look how many children there are. They have nothing to eat because we have no money. You cannot buy anything and you cannot carry on with your livelihood because of the fighting. There's a real fragility in the whole social and economical fabric in, in central Mindanao. People are very, very vulnerable. So it takes very little just to get them down. And then it takes a long time for them to recover. Aid agencies such as the World Food Program have stepped up their relief efforts across Mindanao. It's not an easy job. Aid workers say some 450,000 people have been displaced since the fighting resumed last month. These refugees are spread across hundreds of small evacuation sites across Mindanao, making the distribution of aid all the more chaotic and challenging. Many of those affected live in areas that are far too dangerous for international aid agencies to operate, and it's left to small charities like this local church group to distribute aid. We followed them on a mission to deliver food to one village. It soon became clear why no other aid groups have dared to come here. 
The whole area is a combat zone. Not the best environment for humanitarian work. While we filmed, pro-government militias took first choice on food meant for refugees. Yes, I, I, I honestly feel very uncomfortable when there are militaries around. Uh, because there might be uh, armed conflict once they enter a place. So we will be, uh, you know, we will be in danger. There's little evidence that the Philippine military is about to let up its campaign. They say they're after rogue MILF commanders who attacked and pillaged Christian towns, killing dozens. But the conflict is quickly escalating. What started out as a political crisis has very quickly disintegrated into a humanitarian one. And there are worrying signs that the worst is yet to come. The first casualty of war is truth. There are many different versions of what happened to the buildings, to the people in this village. Now documenting civilians killed or injured in this conflict can be a very dangerous job, but that's exactly what one volunteer group, Ceasefire Watch, is doing. Here's the story of one human rights worker in her own words. Some viewers may find some images in this report distressing. My name is Brenda Alvarico from the town of Mitsayap, Cotabato province. I joined CIS Firewatch because I wanted to help powerless people like myself. I don't receive a salary doing this and I don't ever expect one. I just want to help. I will go into these dangerous places even though I know I'm entering the jaws of death because it's my only hope to highlight what is happening on the ground so the government will know. I don't care if I die doing this, death will be okay as long as I've done something to help my fellow people who are poor just like me. I do this because poor people like us mean nothing to those in power. <laughs> I don't want people to say that we are just making up stories that are not true. So my job is to go right into these places to see what really happened so we can report it back. They are the military. Shouldn't they be the ones protecting the civilians? But they are the ones killing the civilians now. Where is our justice now? Who can we go to? Who can we go to to stop the war here? Dito ang apo niya na sumasakay ng bangka tapos binumba ng military dahil ang, ang pagkakala ng mga military kalaban. Hindi rin alam na civilian pala ito na gusto maglabas para makaiwas doon sa kutukan. Kaya ito ang nangyari. Hindi na umangkob sa kila ni mapita ang toko piya ng kapang gano'n. Siya na na nagkaisiyan sa nakakasa duti. I could never accept this happening to my own family. The people here are rebelling even more because of these things happening to them. If they want Mindanao to be peaceful, they should do what it takes to make it peaceful. Don't involve the lives of innocent people like children, girls. No one understands the lives of civilians. The big leaders are up there in air-conditioned offices. They cannot see how we are living, how we are uprooted from place to place. They don't see the civilians dying. All the leaders care about is politics and money. We're going to pause for a break here on 101 East, but when we come back, we'll be talking to leaders on both sides of the conflict. Stay with us.